Eternal Father, Covenant Keeper, Covenant Keeper, Lover of our souls, Bishop and Shepherd of our souls. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. Lord, Bishop and Shepherd of our souls, the creator of the ends of the earth. The maker of the cosmos, the universe, living in the third heavens, in a city that the human eye cannot behold, and yet is in existence. It's going to come down and march with a new world, and then God will live with his people in the end of the day. But that day is very far away. Meanwhile, we are talking about returning to the high heavens to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then all the commotions of life will have come to an end. And all sorrows are wiped away from our eyes and our hearts. Lord, we thank you for the much you have delivered unto your people a few messages but there are the messages of the hour do there have to be 1000 before they do the work it can be one single message but it does the work precious lord when pastor Bid was praying yesterday did i know what he was going to pray about but you led me to tell him to come and pray eternal father you are fantastic. You are great. You are wonderful. Did I hear? I have not had that testimony that he gave. Wonderful God. Wonderful God. You preserved him. And then in the course of time. Saved him. Now to serve you. If the person strays. Then the person is lost. The God will say, I preserved you, I saved you to serve me, and but you rebelled. Father, we thank you. I know that everybody has one kind of testimony or the other that can be likened to his testimony. We praise your holy name. Lord, as we go to this one now, bring out the truth. Because you are the God of truth. It is stated in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 4. He is the rock. His work is perfect. All his ways are justice and judgment. A God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. You are just and right. There is no iniquity. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, our Father. Lord, I pray. I pray to you. That you will grant not only me, but all the people that identify that align with me. The mind that, that was in Christ. The mind that, that was in the apostles. When the apostle was writing all his letters, he was not writing just ordinary letters. He was writing mysteries of the kingdom. And he was sure what he was talking about. When Moses was writing the book, the Pentateuch. He was not writing as somebody who had some story from somebody, some fable. But he wrote by inspiration. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. As if he were there when the things were, were happening. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And he recorded everything as if it was dictated and it, it was actually dictated to him by the Holy Spirit. Now many people are arguing because they are barren in their minds. They are arguing because uh, there is no conviction. There is no Holy Spirit. And if somebody does not have the Spirit of God, who will bring conviction into the mind of the person? It is a spirit that brings conviction. When the spirit comes, it will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. But barren are there who do not have your spirit. Eternal Father, that is the reason they are arguing. My Father and my God. But Father, such a thing ought not to be in church. And may such a thing not be in church anymore. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you. Lord, we bless you. We thank you because uh, you are going to speak again. And then with your speech, you will do great things as you have already done. Thank you for the testimonies. In Jesus' name, we have our prayer. Now we are going to sing two songs. One is a song number 54. And the other one is song number 42. Song number 54, first of all. Just as God who reigns on high spake to men in days gone by, so the Lord is calling men today. And my brother, this is true. Whatsoever he says to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey. If you are in the Savior's side, you must do as he commands, for there is no other gospel where. Never put the message by, never stop to reason why. When the Savior speaks to you, just obey. If for mansions fair your sigh, your long, your desire, in that land beyond the sky, after time with you has passed away, though the way you may not see, Christ is calling, follow me. Faith and duty both will cry. Just obey. Just obey. Just obey. Is the way, God's way. When his message comes to you, there is but one thing to do. Just obey. Just obey. Let's take it now. Just as God who reigns on high spared to a man in days gone by, so the Lord is calling men today. Man, my brother, this is true. Also, he says to you, there is but one thing to do: just obey. Just obey, just obey, just obey, just obey is the way, God's way. And when His message comes to you, there is but one thing to do. Just obey, just obey. If you are in the Savior's side, you must do as He commands. For there is no other gospel way. Never put the message by, never stop to reason why. When the Savior speaks to you, just obey. Just obey, just obey, just, just obey, obey is the way, God's way, when his message comes to you, there is but one thing to do, just obey, just obey. If for man shall say you sigh in that land beyond the sky, after time with you has passed away. And though the way you may not see, Christ is calling for me. Faith and duty both will cry, just obey, just obey, just obey, just obey, just obey, just obey. is the way, is the way, God's way, and when this message comes to you, there is but one thing to do. Just obey, 
Song number one of 42. Sing them over again to me, wonderful ways of life. Let me more of their beauty see, wonderful ways of life. Ways of life and beauty teach me faith and duty. Christ, the blessed one, gives to all wonderful ways of life. Sin are listening to the loving call, wonderful ways of life. Also freely given, wing us to heaven. Sweetly echo the gospel, call wonderful ways of life. Offer pardon and peace to all wonderful ways of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctify forever. Our dear Savior will come someday, wonderful ways of life. Come to rapture his bride away, wonderful ways of life. Glory, 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 shout the wondrous story. Beautiful ways, wonderful ways, wonderful ways of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful ways of life. it now. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of the beauty see, wonderful words of life. Words of life and Yeah. 
words and wonderful words wonderful words of life lord i remember when they were incarcerated in prison after pentecost because they had preached the resurrection of jesus christ and i told them not to speak in this name anymore but then the angel went into the prison house and just freed them and told them to go into the temple and speak all the words of this life. All the beautiful words of this life that make for salvation, that make for belief in God. Lord, uh, may I open my mouth and by the spirit of the living God, the spirit of truth that is dwelling within me. Blessed Father, dish out wonderful words of life. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's not of him that will it, not of him that run it, it's of God that showeth mercy. It's not by might, it's not by power, it is by my spirit, saith the Lord. Father, remember that Jesus Christ said, my doctrine is not mine, but he is that sent me. Of myself I can do nothing, precious Lord. And if he of himself could do nothing, but whatever he said, said it by the Holy Ghost, whatever he did, he did it by the Spirit of God, so must he be with me and with any person who recognizes that he cannot be above his master. Thank you very much. Because I know that words will flow out and the spirit will flow out. And then we grow wings and then saturate the hearts of the people. And then remove everything that should be removed. By your word, demons are cast out. By your words, all the natural tendencies are destroyed. Thank you very much. Your word is water that cleanses us. May the word that cleanse us and set us free from every manner of pollution which we may have gathered from here and there. Blessed be God forever who has done what we have asked him to do. Even much more than we can ask or think. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. And amen. You may not be seated. The message is, who is on the side of the visioner, who is on the side of the second Abraham, or the second Moses. And I know that um, when you make uh, some comments, as a result of uh, having had your eyes of understanding opened, there is always a, a possibility of those that are not operating on that realm to begin to doubt. We say this is fallacy. Others will say this is abomination. Others will say this is heresy. That happened during the time of Jesus when he said, I proceeded from the Father. I and the Father are one. The Jews said this is an abomination. You've made yourself God. Who can hear that? But Jesus Christ continued to say what he knew was the truth. Remember that at a point in time, he said that Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. And the people were awed. Look to me this way. Don't look to any other side. Because if you begin a message without understanding the preambles, you will not be able to benefit. I'm talking about when a thing is said, and some people who didn't understand, who are not in that realm, they begin to agitate. And I was saying how it was in the time of Jesus. He said, Abraham saw my death and rejoiced. And the people were saying, you are not 50 years. How did you see Abraham? But Abraham saw the death of Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a type of Christ. Without record of the beginning, without the record of the end of life, no record of his mother, no record of where he was born, abided a priest forever. That was what Jesus was referring to. And then they say, what are you talking about? 
And then they went to challenge him further. He now, he now, he now voiced out another thunderbolt. He said, before Abraham, I was. Now they said, this man must be killed. I remember at Olaleye when I said that the mercy seat of God is in my heart. And some people were saying, what kind of thing is this? Mercy seat of God is that place, that ark of the covenant, and then the cherubim overshadowing it, and at the center was from where God was speaking. Because God was speaking through his spirit from my heart, and I know it. And then some people were questioning it. I remember when we said that the watchman is like the White House of America. And I described the White House of America. And from there, power oozes out and the world is being controlled. And some pastors said that, that is abomination and left us. And then lost his bishopric. He that thought that I was wrong, where is he now? He no way to be found because he didn't understand. Now I am saying that the team is who is on the side of the vision. In other words, that on the side of the second Abraham, and on the side of the second Moses. And then you are saying, ah, you are a second Moses, you are a second Abraham, you know? And there are people that uh, will not just be, you know, take the thing to themselves. You know, they will begin to, immediately we finish, they take a phone and phone a pastor in Redeemed. Pepon, a pastor said, Look at what this pastor said. Said he is a second Abraham. And then confusion will go into all the world. The people didn't listen to the message. But that's not what I told you to do. I want you to understand what I'm saying. And if you understand it, you make use of it and it will benefit you. There are people who get offended if people say, Ah, the God. God of Aloysius, God of a social person. And then they said, What? What are you talking about? This is an abomination. Now, why is it not an abomination when you say God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Why is it not an abomination? Why do we say God of Moses? Why do we say God of Jacob? Why do we say God of Elijah? Now, these are renowned men of God that follow the Lord, and God, is, this, God is, is happy to be associated with them. Did you hear me? Yes, and some ignorant people, some envious people, uh, of course there are some people who take it out of a context, who take, it, uh, who take it the way they shouldn't take it, but some envious people will say, God of uh, only you have pastor. Did I say that is God of Aloysius alone? Did I say he's God of Washman alone? But I said he's God of Washman. What is the wrong thing about it? Washman is a special congregation. I said the truth. That's it. So I want to give one proof of uh, the visioner being a kind of uh, second labra. When you see the truth, you take the truth. You don't need to announce it to people. You take it to yourself and it benefits you. If somebody hears it and confronts you, you tell him the truth and go away. Whether he believes or doesn't believe that it's his cup of tea, it's not the issue. There are very many people that are called men of God who are not men of God. And do they bother that they are not men of God? So we're going to look at Genesis chapter 12. Let's run to the message. Genesis Chapter 12, reading from verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, out of all of the Chaldees, from the other side of the river Euphrates, and I think it is present there, or Iraq, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee what? A great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. 
I will make of thee a great nation. May I ask you, did God make a great nation out of Abraham? Yes. What nation? Israel, the present Jews. The present Jews in the Middle East, that strip of land. God made a great nation out of them according to his word. At the time he gave him this uh, information and brought him out, he was uh, 75 years old. Then, 10 years after, at the age of 85, the, the, the wife deceived him into entering Hagar. And then Ishmael was born when he was 85. Now, but God did not recognize all that. He had promised a son. And 25 years later, at the age of about 100, he had Isaac. And Isaac begat Jacob. And Jacob begat the two 12 brethren, the patriarchs. And then eventually these brethren you know, went to Egypt. They had, because of envy, sold their brother Joseph into to the people. And then when he landed in Egypt. And eventually God created a situation that made them to migrate into Egypt. And Joseph received them. And then there the was great and multiplied. And then the nation was now born. A very strong nation. And these people wanted to oppress them. And de de determined to exterminate them. Remember that by the time Moses was born. The rule was that there should be extermination. If you kill every man child. What, the, what was the strategy? Every man child is killed. In the process of time, there are no replenishment of male children. And then the men are aging and dying. And all of them will die. And now all the, the, all the Hebrew women will be married to the Egyptians. And that will be the end of Israel. That was the, that was the strategy. That was uh, the, 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 the scheme. But God said, no, I had made a promise to Abraham. And out of his seed shall the whole world be blessed. Now that was after, concerning Abraham of old. Now, I now say, and that was the first Abraham. And now why do I now claim to be a second Abraham? Why do I claim that? I claim that because of the like thing that he told me. Please try to understand. I claim that because of the like thing that he told me. The like program. Now let us read in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 was given in a particular day. Uh, the Bible I have is not the Bible that shows the date. And I've told you a number of times uh, the circumstance of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 12. I told you that uh, prior to that morning, the earlier evening, I was sorrowing. Look up to me. And the burdens of this ministry and the lacks and the commotion and the problems were so much. They came upon my mind and I was looking at my health. I was looking at everything and I was considering. Look at all the things that God has told me. Look at how I have obeyed him in, in returning to Lagos. And in abandoning my profession and my academic pursuit. And in obeying him in everything as to who to marry. And as to where to live. And as to what to do. How come that all these problems are all there? Will this ministry actually be fulfilled? That was what I was uh, thinking about. And sorrow filled my heart. And uh, 
I went to bed with that sorrow. When I slept, I didn't know. You know how you be thinking and thinking until you slumped and went to bed. But early the following morning, what woke me up is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 12. That was the word that woke me up. And I reached out to the Bible. I didn't know readily what that place contained. But now let us read. Now it says, Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sun which is by the seashore innumerable. Now this reference was it to who? To Abraham. Look, let us see it in from verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obey. And he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him, considered him faithful, who had promised, therefore sprang there even of one of this Abraham, uh, 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 who, as, though as good as there, so many as the stars of the sky, a multitude, and as the sun which is by the seashore, innumerable. Now, and this scripture is now quoted to a man that is wondering whether what God gave to him originally is possible or feasible this time around or not if you were with if we were me what would you do would you not rejoice would you not say okay abraham has finished his role and gone and now i have a like role a like a like a, a like cause look and look at me Abraham was a protagonist. Now, a protagonist is someone who championed a cause. He championed the cause of raising a nation called Israel. And then I am a protagonist. Another protagonist in the, in the form of Abraham, a man that is championing the raising of another nation, a nation of Christians that Christ will take at the rapture. Final full stop. It's very clear. First Adam led us into dilapidation. First Adam, the man Adam. Second Adam, Christ, led us into life. Now, first Abraham was given to raise a nation. A nation should be raised through him. Another person, now God said, another nation, a nation of rational people will be raised through him. Then why argue? Why argue? What is, the, what is the confusion there? There is no confusion there. Consider Moses. Moses was another protagonist. He championed a cause. Now, what cause did he champion? These people have been incarcerated. This nation that had been formed. There were 75 souls that entered uh, Egypt and then they grew and multiplied and on and on until they grew out of leaf, grew in leaves and bounds. And then there arose a king, a pharaoh, that did not have recognition of Joseph, what Joseph was unto the, unto the kings, uh, previous kings, and then decided that they must be exterminated. And it was at that time that another protagonist was elected in the name of Moses to bring them out. And then are you now saying that it is, uh, it, it is a fallacy or it is an abomination or it's a heresy for somebody to say, I am a, another protagonist? 
When we began this ministry, were we not launching and uh, talking and we are returning to it? Didn't you hear Pastor B's prayer last night? Didn't you hear what the present Pope Paul, Brother Francis said, what he repeated to us? If we have lost sight of it, is it because that there is no danger? It is because we are dead in that regard. And therefore, the ministry began with moving the people, Exodus determined. Didn't you hear it at our Exodus had been determined. Now, may I ask you, how many of you here are of Roman Catholic origin? Raise your hand. Now, almost everybody, excepting a few, now 5% only, or less than 5%. Now, is that not Exodus? Yes. Now, if we return to the original something, will more and more people not be released from the system? Listen to me attentively. Five years ago, I was ministering in my village. And then, at a point in time, I went crazy. Something came upon me and I went crazy. And I said, make the loudspeakers to be loud. Because there are very many villagers living around the village fellowship. And then I began to scream, all of you that are listening to what I'm saying and you are following Roman Catholicism, I want to give you information. In 20 years time, if Jesus tarries, that that, that, that house people were run away from that house hear it from me that's what I said in the village that was 5 years ago 20 years time the place we check and people were run for their dear lives recently a former reverend sister came to me and to tell me all the ordeal all the mess up that she suffered how many years a young woman that maybe she's in this meeting very pretty and at the age of young age she was living her life as a young person having suitors fair in complexion and then living a life of uh, enjoyment but at a point in time he came to her sense he said this kind of life will well, send me to her and then he said, I must quit. And he quit sin. And then said, what am I going to do? I want to be a reverend sister. And then he thought that that was the way. And went to the secondary school. And then from the secondary school, he went to the novitiate. And then did the, 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 one, the one that they call aspirant. And then from aspirant, he went to the novice. And from the novice, he became a full-fledged. He showed me the pictures of the ordination. And then entered into one of the congregations and uh, and uh, and the reverend gentleman there messed them up he said three of our superiors got pregnant at his hand and then when they were attempting abortion they died and he told me he said that he told them that what he's doing is holy sin that they should not confess it to anybody and the woman got confused and was saying, what is holy sin? And then in that confusion, he went to another, another priest somewhere and then was saying to that person, is that any sin, holy sin? And that one was sincere enough and said, if you commit sin with father, you have committed sin. If you commit sin with bishop, you commit sin. If you commit sin, even with pope, that is sin. That is nothing like holy sin. And then all the advances that this person and if I can't mention the name because the person was known parambulating down here all this while being called man of God and the advances that he made unto this lady the lady refused and that was uh, the lady's undoing eventually she quit after 8 years and then joined another person and went there the things became worse another 4 years until she became frustrated Somehow he decided, you know what she told me? He said, I decided to go to America and get lost. That's what he told me. He decided to go to America and get married and get lost. And every arrangement was made, an invitation was given to her through a conference. 
And then every assurance was given. But he went to the interview and then they denied her visa. He said her life crashed because of that. Until somebody introduced her to somebody. And then that somebody brought her to Washman. The first day he went to Washman, eh, he said all the spirits that were in her, all of them were knocked out. And uh, she's going about right now and wooing and talking to other people. That's it. So, Exodus was determined. It was preached. People have forgotten it, but God has not forgotten it. So, there was a protagonist of Exodus. There is a protagonist of another Exodus. So, if he was a Moses, uh, this one is a second Moses. If there was an Abraham through whom a nation would be raised, and there is another person through whom a nation is to be raised to get to heaven, that person is a kind of Abraham, full final stop. He's not claiming it for themselves so that you begin to call me Abraham. I didn't tell you to call me Abraham. My name is Aloysius Jukwemeko Milito Biohanebu. Don't even put pastor. Put brother Aloysius. That's my name. But I'm telling you scriptural truths. So, and that is it about that. Now, there are some other people that we are protagonists. And we can compare ourselves to them. Nehemiah was one. Time has failed me. Let's read Nehemiah. Nehemiah championed a course of doing what? Rebuilding the walls of uh, Jerusalem. And you know that, that this Nehemiah was one of, the, one of the books, the major book we use in establishing the watchman. Am I right? So Nehemiah chapter 1. The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hilkiah, and it came to pass in the Mount Chislu in the 20th year as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came and a certain man of Judah and asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left in the captivity that are in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down. The gates thereof are burned with fire. That is the information he, refused, he received. Listen to me. At the time of Nehemiah, he was enjoying in the court of the king where he was serving as a court bearer, as a, a chef. And uh, now he got this information concerning the people that escaped when the captivity took place. And then got information how the gates of Jerusalem, the holy city, the adult place, the city of the Most High God, how it was in shambles, the gates are burned with fire, the walls are dilapidated, and they mourned and wept and went into prayer. And then after praying, now the king recognized that he was into some sorrow and said, What is your sorrow? This thing is sorrow of a heart. You are don't fear, you are not cheerful today. And he said, why should I not be sorrowful? And he mentioned uh, what was his problem. And the king said, what is it that you want? And he told him what he wanted. And in the, in the, in the course of time, the king allowed him to go and then uh, gave him all the f f f uh, uh, facilitations that he required. And he went, did the Reiki, surveyed the place and mobilized the people. And we have uh, this record that the people all with one mind uh, turned unto him to do this great work. The work of building, rebuilding Jerusalem. May I ask you, did they rebuild the walls of Jerusalem? He was a protagonist. He was uh, championing a cause. And so here, I'm a protagonist. I am championing a cause. And I can say that I'm a Nehemiah. And if I say it... Uh, I'm not wrong. If I say that we are Nehemiahs, we are not wrong. If I say we are Abrahams, we are not wrong. If we say we are Moseses, we are not wrong. Look, we are not wrong. 
Because we are saying the truth. Even if the poor world don't agree, but God agrees, what about it? It is not uh, for you, for somebody to now, to now arrogate and begin to be proud and they say, I'm an Abraham. I am a Moses. It's not so. But you are encouraging yourself and uh, propelling yourself uh, with uh, what uh, you know to be truth. Now, we have uh, other people that championed causes that we can liken our cause to their cause. Let us look at Enos in Genesis chapter 4. Genesis Chapter 4, reading from verse 1. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. This information, this, this, uh, this statement shows you that he had had other children, he had girls. Listen to me. If you look at the recording and the genealogies in the Bible, women are not mentioned. So somebody should not ask you that question from where did, did Ken get his wife? It is people who don't understand that ask the question. The woman had children, but they were women. And then when he got this one, he said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And it was allowed for that man to marry uh, sister because there was no other person to marry but when the world and when the people began to multiply it became an abomination in Israel to marry a close relative are you following what I'm saying now and again he paid his brother Abel and Abel was a keeper of sheep but Ken was a tiller of the ground and in process of time he came to pass that Ken brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord and Abel he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof, and the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering had no respect, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell, and the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wrought, and why is thy countenance falling? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? If thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire. What's the meaning? Pleasure of the desire of sin is for you. Sin lieth at the door of your house. And the desire of it is for you. And uh, thou shalt rule over him. You should rule over that desire of sin. You should rule over it. You should not allow it. Verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Now, you know the rest of the story. He was cursed and on and on. But now look at the ungodly line of Cain who killed Abel. In verse 16 downwards. Are you there? And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod and the, the, uh, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. This Enoch is not the Enoch that was translated. And then to Enoch was born Erad and Erad begat Mehujael. And Mehujael begat Methusael, and Methusael begat Lamech, and Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other Zillah, and Ada bare Jabel, and he was the father of such that do as dwell in tents, and of such that have cattle. And his brother's name was Jubal, he was the father of all such that handled the harp and organ, and Zillah, she also bare to Balkan, an instructor of every artificer in brass and iron and the sister of Tubal Ken was uh, Nama and Lamech said unto his wives Ada and Zillah hear my voice you wives of Lamech hearken unto my speech I have slain a man to my wounding 
and a young man to my heart. He was saying, I killed a man for wounding me and for hurting me. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech shall be avenged sevenfold. Now what he was saying, Cain killed the person that didn't hurt him, but I killed somebody that hurt me. So if God avenged Cain and didn't punish him severely, now he himself will not be punished severely. But look at the godly line of the person called Seth. Verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name what Seth. And uh, the meaning of Seth is appointed. He called his name what appointed. For God said he had appointed me another seed Another, another seed instead of Cain, instead of who, whom Cain slew, and to said to him also that was born a son, and he called his name what Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. At the at the birth of Enoch, Enos. As Enos grew up, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Enos was a protagonist. He was saying, now, we must not follow the line of a king who killed his brother. We must follow the line of godliness. Are you following me? At that time, men began to call upon the name of the Lord again. So, we are protagonists. And I'm showing previous protagonists. Now, there are numerous others. Moses was a protagonist. I have mentioned that. And then there were these other people that were, were friends of the protagonist that aligned with the protagonist. That's the second thing that I am saying. The people that aligned with the protagonist is what I am addressing now. You see that this Enos now, when he made that remark, that statement, people followed. Now, let us see how that there were protagonists and people aligned with them, took sides with them. Now, let us see the case of Moses in Numbers chapter 13. Are you there? Go there quickly. Numbers chapter 13. We are reading from verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that may search the land. Searching the land means secretly, you know, spying it, secretly investigating. Now, land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel, for every tribe of their father shall ye send a man. Everyone, everyone a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. And these were their names. Of the tribe of Reuben, Shammah, the son of, uh, son of Zachor. Of the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Horai. Of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Of the tribe of Ezekiah, Egal, the son of Joseph. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Ushia, who is Joshua, the son of Nun. Of the tribe of Benjamin, Parti, the son of Raphu. Of the tribe of Zebulon, Gadiel, the son of Sodai. Of the tribe of Joseph, namely the tribe of Manasseh, Gadi, the son of Susi. Of the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gam uh, Gamali. Of the tribe of Asher, Setor, the son of Michael. Of the tribe of Naphtali, Nab Nabi, the son of uh, Vosi. Of the tribe of Gad, Guel, the son of Maki. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, jo Joshua, Jehoshua. That is Joshua. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan. And said unto them, Get you up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell therein. See the land, what it is, simply means what the land is like. 
and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many, and what the land is like, that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, the cities they be in, that they live, they dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds, and what the land is, whether it be fat, that is fertile, or lean, that is uh, dry, whether there be wood therein, that is timber, or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the time of first five grapes. So they went up and sighed the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rohab as men come to Hamat and they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron where Ahiman, Sheshai and Talmai the sons of Anak were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came unto the brook, that is the valley of Eskol, and cut down thence uh, a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. The place was called the brook of Eskol, that is the valley of Eskol, because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land, after forty days, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and all the congregation, and, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them, and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it flowed with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it, nevertheless bought. The people be strong and dwell in, that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell on the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, and by the coast of Jordan, and Caleb still stopped the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once. And possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report, discouraging report of the land which they had sight unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in me uh, uh, in it saw. So in it are men of great stature, and I we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which came of the giants, and we in our own sight as a grasshopper, so we were in their sight. In our own sight, we were grasshoppers, and in their own sight, we are also grasshoppers. That was, uh, these were not the people that aligned with Moses. These were not the children of the protagonist Moses. It was only Joshua and Caleb that were supporters. That were what? Supporters. Remember that our team is who is on the side of the visioner. The instruction was given to Moses. And then he sent heads of uh, Israel, 12 heads from the 12 tribes. And 10 people came and gave discouraging report. But Moses had told them, whatsoever you see, be of good courage. Bring good encouraging report so that we can go and do what God wants us to do and take the land. Is anybody listening to me? And so, but the 10 people failed, but two people succeeded. These are the children of the protagonist. These were the people that uh, we are that are aligned. Remember, we are asking who is on the side of this man, the visioner. These people, these two people only were on the side of Moses. And now verse four, chapter 14, verse 1. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried. And the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we died, that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore had the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword, and our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make a captain, and let us return 
unto Egypt. They have already returned unto Egypt in their own minds. And God has seen it as such. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And then Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that sank the land, rent their clothes. And they spake to all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to such it is exceedingly good land. The Lord delight in us, then will bring us into this land and give it us a land of fluid who make and honey only repair not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us, their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not, but the congregation bears stone to stone them with stones and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation because of the children of Israel and God now threatened what he was going to do and you know what he said he was going to do which he did he said all the people that gave this evil report and now said you have brought us up to put our children and our wives as prey now those your children will enter the land you will not enter the land only Caleb and Joshua who were the who were there that are aligned with the protagonist Moses they are the people that entered the land and you and I know that that was what happened praise God the question we are discussing is who is on the side of the visionary on the side of the person God gave the threefold end time project, raising an army of believers from among the congregations in order to bring about a great harvest of souls and bringing a great harvest of souls proper and a revival in the church and then preparing the church for the rapture, raising a nation according to Hebrew chapter 11 verse 12, who is on the side of the man that was given on the vision. We have seen the two people that were on the side of the protagonist, Moses. And then we have other cases. In the case of Barak, he had those that went with him. Let's go to read in Judges. Judges chapter 4. And the children of Israel, verse 1, did evil in the sight of the Lord and Ehud, when Ehud was dead. And the Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, and that reigned in Hazor. The captain of whose host was Caesarea, who dwelt in her arrowshed of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had nine, he had nine hundred chariots of iron, and twenty years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. And Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidot, Lapidus, she joined Israel at that time. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah, between Ramah and Bethel, in Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Rabbi Noam, out of the Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Had not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw to toward Mount Tabor. What is the meaning of go and draw toward Mount Tabor? It simply means deploy troops toward Mount Tabor and take 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun and I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Caesarea, the captain of Jabin's army with his chariots and his multitude and I will deliver him into thy hand. And Barak said unto her, if thou will go with me, then I will go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with thee. Notwithstanding, the journey that thou takest shall not be to thy glory. That is, be no glory for you. Shall not bring glory for you. For the Lord shall sell Caesarea uh, into the hand of a woman. And uh, Deborah rose and went with Barak to Kadesh. And Barak called Zebulon and Naphtali to Kadesh. And he went up with 10,000 men at his feet. And Deborah went up with him. Listen to me. When the trumpet was blown, when the prophetess told her what to do, now these people were mobilized and they gathered up even around this man, the person that had been given 
he went to fight Caesarea and uh, the king of the Canaanites. They gathered around him. They aligned with him. There was uh, this case of uh, a sword. There was something that happened that was interesting. I read it recently and it was interesting. Let's look at First Samuel chapter uh, 11. First Samuel chapter 11. And we are reading from verse 1. Then Nahash the Ammonite came up and encamped against Jabesh Gilead. Gilead is the northern part, Ephraim. The uppermost north of Israel. And all the men of Jabesh said unto Nahash, Make a covenant with us and we will serve thee. Now Nahash was uh, the king of a neighboring, a, neighboring, a neighboring nation. He had encamped. Encamping means that mobilized his army against uh, the people of the north. The city that, was, that is mentioned here. And verse 2 says, Nahash the Ammonite answered them, on this condition will I make a covenant with you that I may thrust out all your right eyes and lay it for a reproach upon all Israel. All of you will come out. The covenant is to let you free and then you go about every man will carry one eye and it's only the left eye. And it will be a reproach to entire Israel. And now this is a, a small city or so in the northern part. And the people became jittery. The people became afraid. Chapter uh, verse 3 says, And the elders of Jabez said unto him, Give us seven days reprieve. Give us seven days to think about it. Respite. That we may send messengers unto the, all the coasts of Israel. And then, if there be no man to save us, that is to deliver us from thee, we will come out to thee. And then you do what you like. Then came the messengers to Gibeah of Saul. And told the tidings in the ears of the people. And all the people lifted up their voices and did what and wept. And behold, Saul came after the head out of the field. And Saul said, What led the people that they weep? And they told him the tidings of the men of Jabesh. And the Spirit of God came upon Saul. When he had those tidings and his anger was enkindled, read along with me greatly, verse 7. And he took a yoke of oxen and hewed them in pieces and sent them throughout of the coast of Israel by the hand of messengers, saying, Whosoever cometh not forth after Saul and after Samuel, so shall be done, it be done unto his oxen. And the fear of the Lord fell on all the people. And they came out with one concern. That was a strategy. Now all the people came out uh, to join him. And then the next moment, uh, the people, the invaders, were destroyed. They came out en mass. But there was a strategy that was, uh, that, was, uh, that was undertaken. The Spirit of God came upon him. He came from the field. He was plowing. And then he killed uh, the oxen. And then sent the meat to the, all the people of Israel. Say, eat the meat of my oxen. And then if you don't come out to join me, to align with me for this cause, all your oxen uh, will be killed like this oxen is killed. And the Spirit of God came upon the people. I said, instead of all of us living our livelihood, even our oxen, uh, let's go to fight. And they rose up to fight. So... They were, they were supporters. They were, they were on the side of uh, this uh, protagonist. Who is on the side of uh, the protagonist that is talking to you? Now, you know that David has 600 men that were with him. In the days of his trouble, praise God. And those men were water faithful. They went and followed him into the forest, into the places where he was hiding, when Saul was hounding him. Those men were, were, his, uh, were his supporters. Those men were saying, we are with you, king. We know you. We know you to be a lover of the Lord. We know that Saul was wrong. It's wrong. At the end of the day, God proved that 
those men right and prove David right. Praise God. We don't have time to read about that. We have talked about Nehemiah and the people that followed him and said, let us join our hands to do this great work. The Lord Jesus Christ at a point in time sought people that would align with him and give and be a, be a supporter of him. In Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26. We are reading from verse 38. Then come Jesus with them unto the place called Gethsemane, and said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. And said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and wash with me. Do what? wash with me. I want to hear your words of prayer. I want to hear you praying. I want to I want to have some encouragement. I am troubled. My flesh has seen the torture of the cross and then my flesh is trembling and I need those that will identify align with me so that I can be encouraged. And you are asking, why did he take Peter, James, and John? These were the people that were taken to Mount Tabor that saw his glory. And they should be the people that should understand him more than the rest of the people. But when he came by, the people were sleeping. They were not siding him. They did not give him the encouragement. He was saying, who is on the Lord's side? Who is on my side at this point in time? And I want you to be on my side. I left these other disciples because I didn't take them to the mountain. You are the privileged ones that I took to the mountain. And you saw my glory. And you saw Moses came there. And you saw that you heard the voice of the Lord. I want you to be on my side. But he came and they were sleeping. And he was disappointed. If not because he was a godly person. If not because he was a godly person. He would have left them. At a point he said keep sleeping. But after a while he now turned and said. Let's be going. Are you getting me? Yes, so. There is always a protagonist. People that are championing some causes. That God has given unto them. And there are always people that align with them, that identify with them, simple and short. And then we're asking, who is aligning with me? Think about it. We're showing scriptures. Paul the apostle had the people that aligned with him. Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas, Paul and Silas. In the midnight, they were praying. He was his companion. Paul talked about other people who he said they were like-minded. Who he said they were like-minded. Shall we read in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 20. Paul had people that aligned with him. Philippians chapter 2. And verse 20, for I have no man. Let's read from verse, uh, verse uh, 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 19. But I trust in the Lord Jesus, so send who? Timotheus, shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally call for your state. But I have this Timothy. Praise God. But I have this Timothy. Who is like-minded, not the people whose belly is their God, whose glory is their shame. There were people who may call the co-laborers who labored with him, including women. They were the people that aligned with him. Now, the next thing we are discussing is what is the pattern of life for these supporters of the protagonist. What pattern of life? What pattern of life? 
Of course, their life must be like the life of the protagonist himself. Praise God. Otherwise, they will be telling lies. They will be simply telling lies. They will simply be hypocrites. What is the life of the protagonist? What is my life? We are going to extract my life. And then, if you say that I am, I am with you. If you are saying, I am on the side of the Lord. And I am on the side of the vision. And I am on the side of the visioner. Then the question is, what is your life? What is the pattern of your life? Does it agree with the protagonist, the champion of uh, the course we are following? Did you see, let's begin with uh, Moses and Joshua and Caleb. Did you see that they were like-minded? I am asking you. Did you see that they were like-minded? And they believed in their God. And the Caleb stopped the people and shouted and put his hands into his ears. And he and Joshua and fell on the ground and began to scream, Stop your rebellion. We are able. They had the faith of Moses. Moses had encouraged them and said, Bring good report whatsoever you see. Let me ask you, do you have my faith, my persistence? Woman, woman leader, there are people there. There are people there. He, uh, I have information. The clash, woman leader is in at loggerheads and they are cat and mouse. One time in the recent past, before that person bolted away from our ministry, somebody wrote a stinker pages against his district past and said, I will come face to face and state what I have written in his presence. And I called Pastor Protas, and the person came and stated everything. We read everything, and he brought more accusation. In the presence of that district past. Now, another person, now, but I said, I said to, to that district pastor, I am not going to do anything because of these allegations. Because this man that wrote these allegations, I know him, that he is a. Uh, uh, he is a, a unionist in church. You know who unionists are? Agitators. People who are agitating and saying that the company is not doing well and lead the people into strike. I said he is a unionist. I told him you are a unionist in church. So I'm not going to take all you have written. Lying who can sink her. I turned to the person and said, there is an accusation that was brought to about you, which God told me that you committed and you are denying. And God told me there is no truth in your denial. That is what I'm going to hold you on, not on these ones. And now, before you know it, another person now brought information that he is planning, he has planned to leave the church. And then he was brought, and the person that brought the information came in his presence and then said, and said in my presence, in the presence of protest, and said, that person that wrote that allegation and this pastor, they are like cat and mouse. I have tried to settle them all these years in church, and it has not worked. Walker in church and pastor. Under pastor, cat and mouse. That's what the other person said. 
and I've tried to settle them, but it didn't work. And then he turned to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the, the district pastor. He said, the reason I brought this matter to the office is that I have loyalty to you, but my first loyalty is to the church. Second loyalty is to you. And this person denied flat that he wasn't planning that, but he planned that. The next moment he zoomed away. That is it. Agitators. Agitators. Woman agitators. That don't see eye to eye with any person that is above them. That neglect any person that God has raised up. And they are saying, this little girl. And they are saying, we know this person. Didn't go to school. And now he's come to be our ruler. Ah, uh, it's because he's marrying pastor, because he's marrying GS. These are agitators. How can those people be on my side? The people that are creating confusion in church. How can they be on my side? How can disobedient people be on my side? The people that disobey. The people that speak whatsoever that comes to their minds. I was told that people are saying, we have put plenty of money, but the rock chapel has not been completed. I heard that somebody was telling me that that is what people are saying. In other words, you are accusing me of embezzlement. That is how God sees it. But may I tell you, may I tell you, may I inform you, I am not like any of those people. I'm an accountable man. Go and ask Samuel. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't squander church money. The money that you brought, we have thousands and thousands and tens and hundreds of thousands that we are sending out every quarter, almost every quarter for the scholarship students that we are training. And that is a good program. They are coming out and they are being useful. And all the churches are, are saying that is it. One of our same pastors said that a big person in a particular church said watchman is a place that has human face. When they knew about the scholarship scheme. So the money is being required. They are there. They are there. We have many that have trained in medicine. We have many that have trained in engineering. We have many nurses. We have uh, physiotherapists. We have them. Nyaku nyaku. Bear with me for the slang. And it is money. And I don't have any regrets. And I don't owe you any apology. And then you see the road. If you see the much of money that this road has, this much that we have done has cost us. And the much of money. Go to our, 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 our mini headquarters that is at Obanikoro. Go there. And see how many millions that have been sunk in the piling alone. We have only done substruction. Millions and millions and millions. And you know what? This land was acquired in 1991. And trouble followed the land since 1991. And there was a time they showed me up to 45 uh, uh, pieces of land at Okota area. And we went into the bush there. And I went there from, uh, from Okota that, that will bust to the express. And then we viewed the places. And we were about to commit our money. And when I came out from the bush, the Lord said, what about Obanikoro? And then I stopped this one. And all the brethren that bought land at that Okota, they all lost their money. Now, 
1991 minus 2014 minus 1991. How many years? Eh? What? 23 years out after, 14 years after. How many years? Nobody went to school. Now, many years after, now the place is, is uh, springing up. And I'm happy. Go and ask how much has been spent. Go and ask this much that you've seen here. How much has been spent? Now, go to UK and Luke gave you, gave you some account. Now, ask the person that is in, in India where we are training these people and in other nations. Ask the person that is in Italy how much has been sent there. Ask John from Canada. John, how much was sent to Canada to buy the church where you are pastoring now? Two, two close to fifty million naira. Otherwise, he's going to Canada with be a West. He was a lecturer at Alvan, and he resigned it, and got sent into Canada. And then he was telling me, "What am I doing here? I didn't come here for greener pastures. I came here to 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 see what we can do." Now in the U.S., we sent recently. $150,000 plus another $30,000. How, how much together? $180,000. Multiply it by 200 and something. How much is it? In Italy, Antony is not around, so they can tell you. And then you are accusing me. You open your mouth. And then you say you are with a progenitor, but with your mouth you destroy everything and tell other people and discourage them. Well, the, the money that we are putting, go to Lekki and then the, the money we use to buy the Lekki Fellowship Center is about 50 million naira. Now we use about 10 million naira to fill it. And now we use about another 15 million naira to, make, to build the thing that is there, the temporary structure. At Okota, the four, piece, uh, the four plus of land that we bought at, uh, at, uh, at uh, what do we call it, at Jawa Estate, was how much? 40, 42 million naira. Not 42,000. And somebody is talking. You are not a follower of the protagonist. Because I have no such life. I don't criticize any person. Somebody that I know that is a very decent and that is very accountable. I don't open my mouth to say anything. Think that you don't understand. What is the lifestyle? Their lifestyle must be the lifestyle of uh, the person they are following. I have not created any problem. I have not clashed with anybody in church for 40 solid years. That's all. I've not spoken evil. There are people who open their mouth. Wah, 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 wah. There are those who don't allow me to talk. I told one that same person, please keep quiet. Let me talk. You talk and respond before you finish. He talks. People that know next to nothing. And they will not listen. People that don't have mentor. People that don't learn. I don't fight with my wife. Go and ask her. I wash her face. Oh no, is there anything wrong? Is there anything that I said? Simple and short. Go and ask my children. If I make an overstatement, I call the person and withdraw it immediately. Go and ask. Go and ask. I don't criticize people. If I talk about a thing, I'm talking about something that I know. I don't open my mouth and talk anyhow. I was genuinely born again. Were you genuinely born again? Do you 
you know anything about sanctification? Did you get the experience? I got it. Instantaneous experience. I promote peace in church. I don't discourage anybody that want to serve the Lord. Is it true? So many people do some things and I hear some things that I don't understand. Some of the people tell my children and tell my in-law, your, your, your father-in-law is the owner of the church. Bring the money. Stupid, stupidity. Pure stupidity. Bring the money. Which means that is what they will do if they were in my position. Bring the money so that we can shop. Bring shop money, church money, so that we can chop it. Listen to me. Listen to me attentively. I don't give people church money. The people that I give church money are people in church. And you ask me, how did you get the money? I don't have any, 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 uh, what do you call it? Any secrets. During the time of uh, shares, I bought shares. I was working at DTV and I was a senior quantity surveyor. My late wife was a teacher and we bought first bank shares. And I bought this, bought the bank shares that collapsed intercontinental and the thing rose to up to 40 something naira per share and then and I had up to 400 and something shares and the mistake I made was not to sell it when the ovation was loudest I cut it into two and I got not less than up to 10 million naira and the intercontinental bank shares is still sending me money First bank share seen giving me money. Apart from the money that the brethren are dashing me, but not everybody. I don't receive that. I don't receive the gifts from everybody. There are people that I return their gifts. I don't need your gift. This one that I came back, I saw some somebody say, has written a check and put it on my table. I saw another person has, uh, has packaged $1,000 and put it on my desk. I was saying, who brought this thing? And the person said, I'm the person. Did I ask him to give me? Do I go borrowing? Do I go begging? From time to time, from here, from there, from there. People on their own. Because they love the man. They know that uh, he's a good man. If I'm not a good man in their sight, I'm a good man in the sight of God. That's all. I don't shop God's money. Bring the money so that we can shop. I tell it to my relatives. Don't expect me to bring money. You are, you are Catholics. Go to the father and ask him to give money. You are giving father money. And then you think that in the watchman, I am a father. So bring the money to me. Don't ask me money. Because you don't go to father and ask him money. You take your own money and give to him. Who is on the side of the protagonist? You must learn who is this protagonist? Who is this uh, the person that is championing this cause 
What kind of man is he? What kind of mind does he have? Do you, do you, do, does he respect elders? Does he respect elders? Does he talk rubbish unto people? That is, insult people that are above you in age because you are their ruler? Now, is he, is he a lord of a God's heritage? Now, Joseph, when did you people begin to say, sir, did, were you saying, sir, when we were in your house? Oh, bro, bro, Lloyd, did I protest? Did I say, am I not your pastor? People manifest authority which they didn't build. You manifest authority. You didn't build it. Build your authority. Build the love. And then the people, listen to me. I was telling somebody. Now, how did you become the sole signatory of the church account? Who made you the sole signatory? And I told them how I became the sole signatory of a Washman church account. Is anybody listening to me? All over the years, from the one, Joseph was a treasurer. Am I right? I never, you, I never got involved in counting money. The only thing I got involved in is that when we wanted to spend it, you, you people will, will tell me what we want to do. And I give approval. True or false? Now later on, we decided to have an account. And then, but before then, many years went and we were putting our money in bonus account. And we were drawing, putting in and drawing. And the time came, and when we decided to have an account, and only Citizen Bank was willing to open an account for us. And Brifan went and brought the papers for opening of an account. And then, all the papers were filled up filled out. In my office, Anthony was there, Bonnie was there, I don't remember, I think uh, if I was there, I don't remember about four people of our elders who were in my office. And then I said, men, brethren, make choice of your signatories. I didn't want to be. And then there was silence, graveyard silence, after I made the comment. Make choice of your signatories so that they can sign and be your signatories. And then he finally rose up and said, What do you mean? He looked at me in the face and said, What do you mean? You mean to say that any one of us can be co signatory with you? There is no such thing. And the other people said, There is no such thing. Only you will know. How did you become the signatory, the sole signatory of church account? You mismanage the church account and then bezel it and call the people for money and they give you this and they give you that and yet you are complaining. That is not the life of the protagonist. The protagonist fears God. We have not arrived. Nobody has arrived. I don't have time to talk and talk and talk. Check your life. I don't retain bad mind in my mind. I don't allow it to stay. Insults don't mean anything to me. Somebody wrote me a letter recently. And then you know what he said? The letter is up to 10 pages. And then his letterhead says Saint Soso, Saint Martin. This is an individual that I have known that has a problem. And I've counseled him over the years wanting to save him. And then one of the times we brought him to this place and I was counseling him, reminding him of the things that he was saying. That those things are bizarre. They are not working. Trying to counsel him, not knowing that this man was 
was offended. He, he later on told the same pastor that he, 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 that he managed not to walk out on me. And then went back and wrote me, wrote me the greatest thinker. How many pages? And quoted scriptures. And said, you are the most wickedest man. In fact, he fed in English language. In fact, he, he went to CKC and had grade one. And I was saying, this person that told me that I had a brilliant secondary school uh, 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 education from Christ the King College, now he's saying you are the most wickedest man. <laughs> I just laughed. <laughs> that you are the most wickedest man for giving him counsel. He didn't want that, that kind of counsel. And then he packaged it to on each other same pastor. And then that person read a bit of it and said, don't send this thing to GS. He said, I have already sent it. Yes, it's on my desk. No problem. I'm the most wickedest man because I wanted you, I want you not to believe the visions that you are seeing because they are not of God. That's the offense. That's the offense. He wants me to be a member of Biafra. He wants us to champion Biafra in the church. That's the beginning of the problem. I said that there is no such thing. European people are in this church. Also people are in this church. Ishakiri people are in this church. Cross River people are in this church. And this church is not Biafra church. I don't care whatever cause anybody. If you win, Listen, if they win and I have to take visa from wherever I am, I take the visa and come to Biafra. And then or come to Nigeria, wherever. But for church, this is church. That's what I told him back in Lagos. This is church. Don't bring it here. Don't bring it here. It may be a cause, may be genuine. May be genuine, but this is church. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. This is not an ethnic, ethnic, uh, ethnic institution. Ethnic institution. That's the beginning of the trouble I had with him. That I should raise an army, a squad of prayers, so that in one year's time, God will give us Biafra. Nonsense. Let me ask you. Let me ask you. Who trained you? Who trained you? You say you're a pastor. Who trained you? I have a, a consultant, gynecologist, is my friend, that is in National Hospital. And he told me something one day with almost weeping in his eyes. He said, Daddy. Do you know that even though I'm a senior consultant, that sometimes when they want to bring some people to me, even to my department where I'm in charge, I am not involved in the selection. And then he mentioned one person they brought. And then he began to work with him. And then, and then this individual, he didn't understand where he read medicine. And one of the days, he called him and said, who trained you? Which school did you attend that you should be like this and call yourself a doctor? Who trained you? Which school did you attend? Now I ask you, who trained you into being pastor? Which school did you attend? I know who trained me. You didn't get training, and at my hand, you didn't get training. But I got trained and I trained people. But you didn't get training. If you had gotten training, you would be like me. Those that have my training are like me. They observe. They see that, look, I don't have problem. My mind is to do this work and to do it. And to do it, and to do it, and to do it with all my heart, 
and to be accountable and to be have my conscience void of offense toward God and toward man. Any person that I should attend to, I attend to the person. It doesn't matter whether the person is Igbo or Yoruba or Hausa. Listen to me. The people that I dealt with very, very, very harshly in this school are the people from my village who did things wrong and I dealt with them harshly. And I dealt with them what? Harshly. The people from my village that walked here, I dealt with them harshly. There was somebody in the head office some time ago did something terribly bad. Now saw who to marry and then went and took the person and they began to live together. And he was working in the head office. And when he was confronted, he said, it was my senior brother that made me do that. Then I looked up and down. I said, the only thing that has saved you is that you are not an evil man. Now, you go away from here, three months, suspension, no pay. And after three months, we brought him back. If you were an evil man, you will not smell this church again. But if I deal with you, your senior brother will say, uh -huh. you went to join evil people. very many people that have arrived they are pastors they are pastors and they are they are they are simply bold they are pastors they intimidate the people the people fear them they do nasty things and the people fear them I told one person that you are your boldness is a sinful boldness that's why you could do all these heinous sins and still pastoring and you come to my presence and you are not afraid because you have arrived listen to me my friends when you do not recognize that somebody is above you and you are in the place where you are as a woman leader as a pastor as a state water whatever you call yourself and you do not recognize that somebody put you there and then you are the Lord there. And you are doing what you like. No reference. You do not say. How would he feel. If he should hear this. Then you are altogether a sinner. So. I read you this scripture. In James chapter 1. James chapter 1. And verse 26. If any man, if any woman among you think himself to be religious, that's the meaning of seem to be religious, or herself to be religious, and breedleth not his or her tongue, but deceiveth his or her own heart, this man's religion is useless. This woman's religion is useless. If you are talking on things you don't understand. If you are criticizing things you don't understand. Criticism is what you are. Discouragement is what comes out from your mouth for other people. Complaints all the time. Complaints all the time. I have passed all for 20 years and I cannot show anything for it. 
What can I show for pastoring for 20 years? So you came into pastoring to show you are upstairs. After 20 years, so that you can say, this is the what I got for pastoring. And then you go about and you are saying it to some other people. We have, we have labored. We cannot show anything for it. That is what you are saying. Ah. So, yours is we must shop. You have become these other Pentecostals. Now they are now fat. They are now fat. They have become gods. And now they are now speaking from the two corners of their mouths. And then the truth has escaped them and they didn't know. You don't breathe all your mouth. This man, my eye is straight on this vision. Nothing is uh, above it as far as I'm concerned. Listen to me. Uh -huh. I remember, thanks be to God. You know, some of the people that don't care about their children, people throw their children anywhere. They don't care whether their children are following or not. In the name of education, listen to me. All the places where my children are, ask Luke. Every Sunday, I must know whether they went to church. Somebody is supervising. But you throw your children to anywhere. Throw them to India. Pastor B told me of a worker in church that threw the daughter into a remote part of India where those Indians have never seen any African for the first time. And then allowed a Kenyan boy to receive that girl. And you know what the Kenyan boy will do? You have given him a wife. And when B said he confronted this person, and this person may be in this meeting, You don't care about your children, whether they are born again. And you don't care about that. Listen to me. Any person among you that does not care about children, whether they are going to heaven, whether they are born again, and you are not bothered, you are not praying, you are not going to heaven. You will never be in heaven. You will never be in heaven. You can't make the rapture. You have no sense of... Uh, now that you produce a candidate for hell. You speak to them and they reject the church. You deal with them and they reject the church. All you want for them is education. And good life. And then you are wanting to make the rapture. Now you have trumpet belongs to you. In fact. The rope to go to heaven, you have it. I I need to I need to send you to my village so that you will meet one man in my village that mocks people who say they are going to heaven. I need to send you to the man. Recently I went to greet him. You know what he will say to his uh, genius, two genius that are pastors. He said where are you people from when they come home? I thought that you had gone to heaven. <laughs> if this way that we are going, our father that brought this land where we are living, if he was going this way that we are going, we will not have where we, where, where we are living now. Now, I will go and bring rope. I said, take rope or yeah, climb to heaven. <laughs> climb to heaven. Go to heaven. And he'll be talking. I need to send you to them. I, so that he can give you rope. So you climb to heaven. You climb to heaven. And discourage your children. And climb to heaven. And you don't care. And there are those. That don't care about standard in church. 
You don't care about standard. I told somebody recently, I said, the fact that you labored is not, there is no question. You have a distinction and super distinction, but you don't have standard. That's what I told somebody. You have super distinction in Z, in, in commitment, but you don't have standard. That's what I said. Standard is necessary. Standard. Quality life is necessary. Quality life is necessary. So, now, you say you are, you are you identify with the man. What is your what is the life you have that uh, that agrees that you identify with the man? It's only my children that that can follow me in this vision. And I will show you now what will what will be what is the lot of those people that are my children. Everybody is not my child. It is clear. If you don't follow my way, you are not my child. Even the place you do what you like, you are not my child. That's what I said. And God has recorded it. You are not my child. I don't have and I don't care mind. I'm not looking for my belly. We spent three clear months in India. And we spent a few days in the hotel. And I checked the money. That was not the high hotel. But the money, I said, God forbid, we cannot continue to be here. And then we went to hire a, an apartment. And we were paying 3,000 plus. In the room and parlor. 3,000 naira plus. That's where we stayed throughout. Until a few days when we were about to go. Then we return to the hotel so that I can recuperate. Yes. We, we bought our food and cooked. We hired stove. Hired gas cooker. And those brethren were very helpful. Some of them were, on, were, 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 not, were not engaged in school. They were waiting for internship and they gathered around and attended to me and attended to my wife throughout the period. And all of us lived together in that apartment. That's it. You don't have time to go and waste God's money. There are those that their wives deceive. Listen. If not for what people will say, I will have told you all of you to remove your scarves so that we see your hair. Did you hear now? Did you hear the reaction? They said I should do that. There you are. There you are now. There you are now. You don't like our rules and you remain in the watchman. Now why do you remain? You are a saboteur. Now you are a saboteur. You don't like the dress code. Now why did you not go away and follow the people? The appropriate thing for you to do is to follow the people. If you continue to remain, you are remaining under condemnation. I am telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. You don't like what we are saying. You say, we are, you are putting us into bondage. Why not go to where they put you into freedom? Did I use shame to shame you here? What is the matter? What actually is the matter? 
What are people looking for in this world? The people that are going naked, they don't tire of that. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, the Vogue in uh, Nigeria girls was, uh, you know, to wear this thing. And the gully here will come out. And the pants will come out. And they sit in the motorcycle and you will see their, their, hey, and what? And the people began to write. Now at another time, it is to show their bobs. And then one lady that was writing in some magazine said, it, it soon it will be, uh, uh, what do they call that a thing that they do to uh, ex exhibition? He said that there is soon going to be exhibition of breast in Nigeria. And now you want an exhibition of breast. Now why not go to the church where they like that? Because that is where you fit, to, fit into. Did I tell you to remain here? Look, I didn't beg anybody to remain here. I have told our people in the places, if you are 10, don't worry. It's not about number. It's about who goes to heaven. Simple and short. Christianity is about moderation, about simplicity, about decency. The Christian woman does not expose her body because... If you expose your body, man will be attracted. Men are wired differently from women. Simple and short. If you show your breast, a man will see it and his body will move. Simple and short. If you show your laps, the same thing. And if the person now becomes intoxicated, you are the person that caused it. Namde, Unachuku, are you in this meeting? If I make this statement and I am right because it is what you told me, you you tell you you are, you you sure that I am right. You told me that a friend of yours went to a particular Pentecostal church, and then parked his car and went into the church and then they received him and sandwiched him among women that were scantily dressed in that Pentecostal church. I won't mention the name because it's a very big Pentecostal church and now the people were exposed their, their laps and everything was so exposed and the man had erection of the manhood now, that's what you told me and the man moved out from the church and went to his car and entered his car and drove away and came to you and said I won't go to church again I didn't go to church to commit sin I went to church to serve God is it what you told me? correct now do you want us to turn our church to be like that? So that men will come into the church and have erection. This is serious. And some pastors don't help matters. You know, they look at their wives and they say, You don't dress all this washman dressing here. And but his pastor, pastor of washman, fake pastor. Fake pastor. I said what? Fake pastor. I didn't say that you should wear shabby things. That's why I was looking for people, somebody that will help me float Christian dress centers. Somebody that will help me float it so that they will, they will train in dresses that are decent, that are nice looking, and yet there are Christian dresses that women can wear. But I didn't find anybody. I didn't find anybody to help me fulfill the vision, and which reminds me, people are all there. They are saying this and saying that. They say, I am this, I am that. And then they go looking for money. And then I'm looking for social people. They are not there, but they are there. I'm looking for social people. They are not there, they are there. We could have floated more Logos International Secondary Schools, 
but we do not have teachers. But there are teachers in the watchman, and they are in government institutions. And I know why they are in government institutions. They are there because they, they defraud government. Why do they defraud government? They don't do any work, and then they get paid. So they are not going to heaven. They are thieves. Because they know that when they come here, my own is, you want to pay, you walk. That's your problem with me. You have to do what? Walk. You know why I chose to begin to train engineers? Civil engineers, mechanical engineers, nurses and doctors. Because some people be, began to become arrogant. And then I said, okay, wait. In 10 years' time, I will have consultants. And then they are coming out. In 10 years' time, we are going to have consultants whom I trained. We are going to have nurses. We now have civil engineers. We have a structural engineers. We have nurses. We have physiotherapists. We have them. We have physicists and everything. So, I don't need them again. I don't need them. I'm training my, my stuff. I don't need them again. That's the truth. So, what are you talking about? Do you have my vision? That's the final I will say. And then I go to what you will gain if you turn to be my child. You have my vision. You have my work etiquette. Are you really interested in the ministry? If you say, I bought, I, I align myself with you, then I align yourself. Look to the hole from where you were healed. Look to the things. Ask yourself, will Jesus do this? Will you do this? Will you quarrel with people in church? Hi. My God have mercy. Now, listen to me. If we call all watchmen together, I can give you this assurance. And then I am not there. And then you tell all of them. No, let nobody know what another person wrote. And you give them pieces of paper. And then ask them the question. Do you like the Jesus? I am sure of 90% saying we like the Jesus. Did you hear me? I mean watchmen small and great. I am sure at least 80%. Saying, I like the man. He's my father. I am telling you. Like me because of what? Because I am the tallest? No. Because I'm the most handsome? No. Like me because I like the people. My life is about the people. I don't have anybody that I have ought. There is no matter that is brought to me and I look away from it and not put all my heart. Listen to me. I will investigate a case and investigate it for 10 days to find out the truth about it. But some people are shabby in their activities. So then, what is the gain of uh, those that, that identify Oh, praise God. The people that identify and, and, uh, and, uh, and align themselves with the protagonists, what is their gain? Let's read from Joshua chapter, chapter 14. Praise God. Joshua chapter 14.
If it is only this scripture, it is sufficient. Now, look at this information. We are reading verse 6. Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua. He has taken over. Praise God. He took over from who? From Moses. He poured water on the hands of Moses. God was washing. Some other people may be saying, Ah, why are you so loyal to Moses? Why is he treating you like a servant, a slave? And the man will say, shut up your mouth. He's my master. And he loved his master and went, not in hypocrisy, not as a matter of eye service. And then, at the end of the day, the mantle fell upon him. And now, that day, verse 6 says, and the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesai said unto him, Thou knowest uh, the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, uh, concerning me and thee in Kadesh Barnea. Take note. Thou knowest the thing that Moses, the man of God. By this time, the man of God was no more. But he was still referring to him as the man of God. He wasn't, he wasn't envious. He still recorded, regarded him as what? As the man of God. There are those that if people say, I spoke to the man of God, they said, why call him the man of God all the time? Why not say, I reported to him? <laughs> they are envious. Why not say they are reported to him? You know the thing that God said through the man of God Moses concerning me and you in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people mad. They discouraged them like people are doing. But I wholly followed the Lord. I wholly followed the Lord like Moses wholly followed the Lord. Nevertheless, my brethren went up with me, verse 9. And Moses were on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children forever. Because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God, and now behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these forty and five years, even since the Lord spoke this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day four score and five years old. I am 85. And as yet, I am as strong this day as I was the day that Moses sent me. And my strength was then. Even so, it is now for war, but to go out and to come in. Therefore, give me this mountain. Listen to me and look up this way. He says, I am so strong that I can draw the bow and the arrow. And I can run here and there. After 45 years, God has kept me alive and strong. At 85, I am young. And then you hear me claim that at 70, I shall be 35. You think that God will not make it come to pass? You wait. You wait. You wait. He has promised me that he will make it come to pass. He has passed me through fire, but he says he's going to pass me through glory, through heaven. Yeah. Listen to me. That is the truth. This man, because he wholly followed the Lord, now was strong. God rewarded him. And God rewards her. You reward those that do according to his word. Listen to me. As you serve him, so he rewards you. What you sow is what you reap. If you serve him, if you follow the way 
Then he will reward you accordingly. Eh? I used to tell some people about my mother will hire the laborer. And there was a man that he used, he hired. And that man was, uh, was a fantastic man. That man never, you couldn't see any offense in the man's face at all. He was all the time saying things that would tickle people. And he was the person that built the wall of our house. And then we will be bringing the most something and he will taking it from us and putting and then chipping it and then making us laugh. And so as we are laughing, we are strong, we are going to bring. And then at the end of the day, my mother will cook that delicious food and then package some part, portion which she will take home and pay him his due, three shillings. You are wanting God to reward you. How did you walk? But my children, this is what belongs to them. Now, I go to the scripture that I went before and then I close with it. Listen to me. Um, in Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. From verse 1, it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that reason the king of Syria and Pekah, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but they could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. That is, the king of Syria and the army now has joined with uh, Ephraim, the northern part of Israel, and his heart was moved, trembled, as the heart of the people, and the heart of the people as the trees of the wood, the trees of the forest, or the bush, are moved uh, with the wind. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and who? Who is charge Ashub? Your son. Let me ask you, Let's read down a little. Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou and Shia Jashub. Shia Jashub, the meaning of it is the remnant shall return, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field, and say unto Ahaz, Take heed and be quiet, fear not. Neither be faint hearted for the two tails of these smoking fire brands, for the fierce anger of reason with Syria and the son of Ramaliah, because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Ramaliah have taken counsel, evil counsel, evil counsel against you, saying, Let us go against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabiel. Thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. Now, wait a minute. Why did he say uh, go to, through such uh, 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 a route, you and Chia Jashub? Was it that Isaiah didn't know the route that God was talking about? So it was his son that was going to, his son that was going to show him the way. I'm asking you, was Isaiah blind? Why you and Chia Jashu? The rule is the ministry belongs to the father and belongs to the son. And everything that uh, belongs to ministry is belonging to both together. The prophetic ministry belongs to the father. If the father has prophetic ministry, if the father has pastoral ministry, the children have the same ministry. 
and uh, he said it is you and Chia Jashub. even in the same Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 19 he said I and the children whom the Lord has given to me we are for signs and wonders and he was talking first of all concerning Isaiah and his children and then but the reference also is talking about Jesus and his children according to Hebrew chapter 2 and when Jesus Christ came he said about his children you are no more servants you are my children you are my friends because everything that I've received of the father I gave it to you a, a servant does not know everything that his master does you are now my children and then when he came to the waterfront he said children have you any meat so what belongs to me belongs to my spiritual children belongs to my physical children you and Chia Jashub go into ministry because ministry is for you and everything about ministry is for you Aaron and his children they were the priests and they ate the things of the they took the tithes and on and on in fact the man Levi the man Levi had died long long ago did you remember he was the third son of uh, of uh, Jacob and he had died long ago and then but it was the Levites the descendants of that man the Levites that now responded unto the Lord and now they became a co co heirs of the Lord that is what God owned belonged to them the ties belong to them so what am I saying if you identify with the protagonist if you identify with the man of God if you identify with the second Abraham all the benefits that are due to the second Abraham are due automatically unto his children no more no less listen to me one thing is very clear about us in the watchman and that is this we are so sanctimonious we are so sanctimonious so reserved so so gentleman macho gentlemanly so gentle womanly that nothing excites us if I said this unto these Pentecostals you will see somebody scream and that screaming is not a show true or false it's not a show he said you have hit the mark you have stopped preaching he will be saying it you have hit it. I am your child. And what belongs to you belongs to me. That's all. We are gentlemen and women. But sometimes you need to be crazy. Did you hear what I said? Sometimes you need to be what? Crazy. I remember the day I was crazy. I was crazy as uh, the man whom we was dishing out the world, and fear filled my heart about what was uh, what was attending me, what was pursuing me, all the all the all the all the things that the people in the Roman Catholic institution were saying, and fear filled my heart as to what they were going to do. My name was in the Lita newspaper. When I was at St. Paul's, that fear was there. Fear was assailing me. And I went to a meeting at Ayobo. And this man opened his mouth and began to talk about those that have God's calling on their lives. Why should you be afraid? There is not anything anybody can do against you. And then he was talking. And he was talking and he made a statement and that statement moved and I saw the statement come and hit my heart and hit my heart then I said in my mind I didn't shout I said in my mind stop preaching I said stop preaching who will tell him to stop preaching because the mark has been scored 
And then as I was saying it in my, ma in my mind, then he said, I am done with preaching. Let us pray. And then immediately I left my seat and moved sharp from the doorway. And then went and opened my friend's car. And then jumped inside it and laid a flat on it. And said, Lord, and I, as I prayed, they took the fear, literally, pium, out of my heart. And then boldness replaced. And I was saying, now I want to see the Pope. I began to say, ask, ask, uh, ask uh, Tony, when we went to Rome, we drove four hours or five hours and we went to Rome and I went to St. Peter's Basilica. I said, I want to see where this thing is happening. And I went there and I stood on the fence and said, Lord, give me this place. Yeah. But I was afraid before. That day I was mad. You have scored the point. Don't preach again. And as if he had it, I was saying it in my heart. He said, I am done. Let's pray. And why did I run out? I didn't want to hear in the name of Jesus that he is, uh, stop praying. Didn't want to hear it because he was going to say it after 15 minutes. And the fear was knocked out from that day till now. I confront anybody, Pope, Bishop, anybody. What are you going to do? When we went to be set on the hill, did I seek police coverage? Did anybody seek police coverage? But you know that the bishop called all the priests together and the priest came here to tell me. Before he could say Jack Robinson, the people had filled the places and it was late. He called the priest together to, the, to, his, to his house. But who cares? You call them together, you don't call them together. What's my business about it? I'm speaking the truth. And what are you going to do? What are you going to do when I'm holding the truth? Truth must swallow error. Simple and short. What are you talking about? You want to kill a man that has the truth and God will allow you to kill him and now so that truth can die. Now, we are gentle women and gentle men and that's why we are not getting it. Yesterday, I said some things and then people were gentle. Instead of doing acrobatics, going out there, and, and lying on your, on your coat that is lying flat on your coat and rolling on the ground say Lord thank you sir Hallelujah. you are doing gentleman Jesus Christ said you are my children what belongs to God belongs to me because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a son of God. And then the Bible says we are joint heirs with him. Now, here we are. I received a ministry that is not negotiable. And all those that follow me have jointly received the ministry. And if they follow my lifestyle, that blessing that God has blessed me with. Listen to me. Listen to me. He allowed the, the kingdom of darkness. Look. It's not explainable. What has come unto me. But God has shown. That he is the father of spirits. It is only what I allow. That can happen. And he has not allowed anything I miss. Otherwise I will not be here. I will have been gone long ago. But you see he said your hand started the ministry and your hand will accomplish it. Yeah. This is where I want to stop. Now cancer is ravaging. Cancer is ravaging. Deadly diseases. How are we going to avoid them? This put yourself inside this thing 
enter inside it so spirit and body that you may be covered I am done if you want to pray you can pray Make yourself a child of the second Abraham. Make yourself accept it. And take your time to learn. Be a man and a woman that will swallow everything. You don't care. If people abuse you, don't care about that. Make sure that you live right and that's all. Don't ever open your mouth against church. Who is on the side of the visioner? Who is on the side of the second Moses? Who is making himself a son or a daughter of the man? A son or a daughter of the man. Who is making himself or herself? Who is saying, I am your child? Who is saying, as far as this ministry is concerned, I am your child? And I will learn of your ways. Paul said to Timothy, Paul said to Timothy, what do you see in me? What do you learn? Do. He said it to the other people that he wrote. There must be those that are aligned with the protagonist. There must be those that are aligned with the visioner. For a vision to be fulfilled. There must be those that buy it. There must be those that are aligned with him and said, we go with you. David has 600 men that went with him. And became his encourager, encouraged him, and spent the times with him until God gave him victory over the enemies. Apostle Paul had colleagues in ministry who were like minded. Timothy was one. Those that are not teaching what we are teaching, they develop their own teachings and say things that are they don't, they don't, they, they like. Are they my children? So they're going to our archive, they develop their own Bible studies.
You may end up your prayer. So far, so good. You may round off your prayers so that we can close. What else needs to be said? There's nothing that needs to be said anymore. There's our quietness. There's our quietness everywhere. So we can conclude. My consolation is that God sees every person. God sees every person's heart. A location where you are in Lagos. What you are doing there is known. The mindset that you are having. How you take me. Whether I mean anything to you or not. God knows. That's my consolation. And God will give to every man according to his works. That's my consolation. You may not bother about how he will feel. You say what you like. You do what you like. Make the people build your house. Make the people honor you like uh, the president of the world. You can do what you like. You can commit secret sins. And nobody sees. I do not need to worry myself. The Lord searches the reins of the heart and will reward everybody according to his work. Is it everybody that died that went to heaven? The people that we buried, all of them went to heaven? Never? It is when we go over there, whoever we see, we take. That is the truth. God knows the secrets of the hearts of men. God knows those who are my children. Yes, who are children of this ministry, who are pursuing what I am pursuing, who are keeping the standard that I am keeping. That's all. He knows them. He knows them. If anybody is following me, then he will, not, he will have minimal problem. And if the problem comes, it will not be from him. It will be the problem of people in church and they settle them. But if the problem is from you, you are not following me. If the problem is from your wife, or your wife is not following anybody. He's following him herself. Listen to me very, very clearly. God knows everybody. Knows those who agree with what we are do doing and those who don't agree and they are still there. But I want to read you a scripture that I don't want you to fall prey to. Matthew chapter 23, just listen to it and be in the mood of prayer. Don't fall prey to this. God is not a respecter of persons. That is, there is no partiality in him. How he treats John, that's how he treats James. He cannot be bribed. He doesn't fear men. Matthew chapter 23, look at what Jesus said in verse 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither allow, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. That is being somebody that is uh, 
and constituting himself a scandal and the people are no more you know living right and then because of somebody's life the people are not living right and there is this commotion and there is the other commotion and people are, are, are agitating he said you don't want to enter the kingdom of God and you are preventing people but Jesus Christ has said nobody should be a stumbling block on another person another person's way don't be a stumbling block as a pastor how can a pastor mess up women and then still preach and then the people, these women knew it. This is strange. How can somebody be living a life and other people are watching? And the person doesn't bother about what these other people that are around are saying. Are you an activist in church? Agitating for this and agitating for that. Did we come to church in order that church will give us this and give us that? Pay our rent. Every person wants his rent to be paid. Please take your time. Look to the hole from whence you are healed. Some pastor told me recently he said daddy I've been observing you since 1984 when I knew you and he was telling and told me the type of dress I was wearing then you will always wear a trouser and a jumper I've been observing you from that time and I've known your life and you are my mentor I didn't know he was observing he's not a member of our church We met at the Monday Bible study at the Thursday charismatic, I mean uh, revival hour and the Thursday uh, Thursday school of evangelism. God wants all the watchmen to be my children. And I need and I need them badly. I said I need them badly. No one man can fulfill a cause. Make yourself this the part and parcel of this cause and make yourself a child of this man. Even if you are older than, by my, by, than myself in age. Teach what I will teach and what will write. Don't teach what you write. I pray.
Said to those people that are pastors and uh, don't do what they see me do, you need to repent in dust and ashes. I don't throw my children away into the world. Some children came to me in India and they said. They managed to come to church that day and said, we are the children of social pastor. But the next day and during the retreat, they were not in the meetings. They don't even near where the brethren are living. Maybe their father chose that they should live on their own. But there is a place where we have a pastor. I don't understand those kinds of pastors. I don't understand them at all. I don't understand such pastors. And such pastors preached to other people and said they are going to heaven. That's not true. You cannot, confine, confine, you cannot force anybody to become born again. But God wants to see your effort. As a father, he wants to see the effort you have made. God didn't see any effort in the life of Eli. Eli spoke softly, my children, what I hear concerning you is not good. That was not sufficient. And the Lord said, you honor your children more than me, therefore all of you will perish. We come to church in order that we may be changed, and I want you to be changed. If you find yourself that you have faltered, faltered in any way, repent of it in dust and ashes and make haste to do the right thing and make the necessary amendments and do the right things before it is late. That is the purpose of this meeting. So that you can be my child. There are those of our pastors that don't tell me anything. But there are those of them that tell me about their children so that I can pray for them so that if possible I counsel them. These other people are secretive. Let them go ahead. What they see, they take. Church is not a place where you are secretive. Jesus doesn't know about your life and you are a pastor under Jesus. And you are a pastor under under the uh, same pastor under this and district pastor under the same pastor doesn't know about your life. Your life is shrouded in mystery. You are economical with words when the matters concern you. Don't want anybody to know about you. Somebody has said that a uh, time that when I asked him about some people, he said they usually speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues is not the usual thing you know. Speaking in tongues it means uh, saying things that uh, make you not understand where they are, where they are going. And what is happening to them? As a creative. The children of Jesus were not secretive. He knew them through and through. Father, I thank you. Because uh, we, are, we are in a separate congregation. We are in a different assembly. 
and the rules of this assembly are altogether different. What's happening here is not what is happening in other places. What is allowed here, man, and what is allowed in other places is not allowed in this place. Eternal Father, I want to thank you. Every person has his own rule. If anybody is given a in visa to India, and then the visa life is uh, from January 2016 to April 2016. It means that that person must have visited India and left by the April 2015, 16th of April 2000. But if somebody has a visa to US, and then the visa is uh, between uh, 16th of January 1916, 2016 to, to, to 16th March, it means that he should enter US before 16th March. And then when he goes there, they will not give him the number of days to stay. It differs from country to country. Precious fire. Church differs from church. Watchman is a different church because he's pursuing a different program. Wonderful father. Why should people not understand it? Why should they not appreciate it? Why should they align it with other places? Why should we align it with other places? Why should we borrow from the Jehovah's Witnesses? Why should we borrow from Christ's embassy and all the places, grandfather in heaven? They are on their own and we are on their own. We are in different schools of thought. Why do they want that we should be the same? Best of the same feather flock together. The best that are not of the same feather don't flock together. The lion does not live with the goat. Eternal father in glory. The lion lives with the lion. Eternal father in glory. The cat does not live with the mouse. Precious father. Abanze does not flow into Oras. Neither does Oras flow into Abanze. My father, there is a demarcation, a confluence between River Benue and River Niger. Two of them are flowing in their own directions and they have a common boundary. One does not flow into the other. Precious father. But there are people that want a watchman to now have a communion with every manner of church. They are the people that want to uh, progress abomination in the sanctuary. Lord, I'm saying, help them to repent so that they don't uh, incur their rot in their, in their rot in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that all the people, all the pastors, all the women, all the ladies that are in this place, that they should change their minds. It is simple to be in church. And to decide to be a peace person in the church. Not to be a troublesome person. Grandfather in heaven. It is easy to be in church and uh, bridle the tongue. And then not side with anybody. Eternal father. And, but make friends with people that have exemplary life. Precious master. It is easy for a pastor to decide to have examples. Eternal father. And when such a pastor decides to be an example, he will make confessions and will even apologize for anything that he has done wrongly unto the people. Precious master, I pray you, let the watchman be the different institution it should be in the name of Jesus Christ. I need the people very badly, great father in heaven. No, pro no, no, no person protagonist can pursue a cause alone and achieve it. Precious master. Nobody. Because a tree does not make a forest. Lord, I pray. After this day, let not there be false watchmen anymore. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let there, be, that, that there not be false watchwomen anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be no false pastors anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let our house be a house of peace. Let there be no commotion. Let the Dyson pastor agree with what I am saying. Let it not be that in my presence they will say yes sir, yes sir. But in my absence they kick against the things that I say. And some people are rubbing shoulders. 
precious master. Oh my God in heaven. This man did not make any trouble in church for 40 years. And I did not quarrel with anybody. And this is the testimony of the man. Man or woman, boy or girl. I did not constitute a stumbling block to anybody. And God is my witness. Lord, I didn't fall from heaven. This was my choice. And you helped me to follow it. And I don't want to constitute any stumbling block. I pray to you that uh, if the time is come, not the time of death, not because I'm rejected, not because of sin, let another person be chosen. Let a woman be chosen. So that I can sit down and show these people how to be loyal. How to help in church. I will not come around and say for 40 years I burned the leader. Providing that the person is not going wrong. Precious master. I've told you to do this thing. Not to cut me off by death. Or reject me because of sin. But so that we can teach them. There is no need for us to have problems in church. That they should be writing me longish mails. And then complaining of their the same pastor's character. And the things they are doing. How they are intimidating them. How that some people are, 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 are favorites. And they do evil. And they will not be punished. You wouldn't know which one is true. Lord, I did not come into the world to continue to settle troubles. And then outlines we will not write. And I will be settling trouble from place to place. I don't want any more. My life is not for it anymore. From 2016, Lord, I don't want that anymore. Take away the people that cause me trouble. Let them go their way. So that we can write outlines. And send to the people. Yes, Lord. If they don't want to repent, let them begin their churches. So that we can have peace in this place. So that if I go to a diocese, I'm going to minister life to the people. Not a subtle problem. Lord, let it be so in all the dioceses. Whether it's overseas or here, let it be so. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's my prayer. And anybody that turns himself, even this day, says, I, I, I follow the Lord. I am on the side of the Lord. And I'm on the side of the vision. And I'm on the side of the visioner. And the person means it. And has turned himself. Lord I say. Accept the person completely. 100% in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let the blessing that belong to the person. Be the Lord of the person. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let the blessing that belong to me. Belong to the person. Amen. Because the blessing of Abraham reached Isaac. And Isaac was blessed because of Abraham. And Abraham and uh, Jacob was blessed because of Abraham. Let it be so in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Let it be so in their families. In the name of Jesus. Let it be so in their wives' lives. In the name of Jesus. Let what belongs to me belong to them. Not the fire, but the favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Paul the apostle said, I want all of you to be like me, but not the bonds. Lord, not the fire, but the favor. The favor that my uh, biological children are enjoying. Let it be the Lord of these spiritual children. In the name of Jesus Christ. My biological children don't beg me to enter the car. Therefore, that thing that belongs to me, the protection of the Lord. Let it be the protection that follows my children. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you dear Lord. Thank you dear Lord. Lord I'm believing that from this year. 2016. Lord that we are having a different watchman. This is my belief. Lord let me not be disappointed. In the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you because I know you've answered. Lord, I thank you because I know you've answered. You are the doer. 
you are not looking for our willingness thank you my father you are the one which walketh in us both to will and to do of your good pleasure therefore do it and i'm sure you do it if anybody's repenting accept the person's repentance and then clean the person bless her father forgive transgressions and remember sins no more thank you very much thank you very much let there be restitution where it is necessary let the people turn from the ways that they were they, were, they went before let the nasty statements they made my father let the the the, the bold uh, sinful statements they made in their in their in their districts and in their in their places let them repent of them because uh, they don't own the church they came to see the church somebody was used somebody was labor somebody suffered precious father can a man suffer to build a house and another man comes to destroy the house who is it that destroyed another man's house to build his own Do you know what God said to somebody recent, uh, a long time ago? Who is it that destroyed another man's house to build his own? Can somebody destroy another man's house to build his own? Is that not an abomination? I didn't destroy any person's house to build watchman. Lord, all the people that ministered to and then uh, to take to them to Monday Bible study, I didn't ask them to follow me. Until tomorrow, I have a good record. What is this? I believe that you have answered me. Lord, do you know the things that created her problems for me? It is church. Yes, you know it. It is this school as I come. And the uh, people are going, they going, loitering about, and then twenty something million is being paid as salary every month, and people are loitering about. And if you speak, you become their enemy. All those pastors that their cases were brought and then they do some nasty things and then the matters come up. If they didn't do those nasty things, will we have problem in the, in the church? They are to blame. But Lord, I thank you my life from 9, 2016 is no more for jeopardy. I want to enjoy my life. Seeing the church at peace. Great Father in heaven. Now that you have decided to re restore my health. Precious Lord. It shall be a time. A time not to regret. But a time in the day that the king shall joy in thy strength. And in thy salvation, how greatly shall he rejoice. Amen. Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholding the request of his lips, seller. Thou preventest and thou meetest him with the blessing of goodness, and thou settest a crown of pure gold upon his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days that runs into forever and ever. My Father and my God, this shall be my testimony. Amen. And this is my testimony. And this is my testimony. And this is my experience. As I go from place to place, this must be my testimony. And this must be my experience. And the experience of my wife. And the experience of all them that are my children. Biological children and spiritual children. Father, I thank you. Because uh, if Jesus is with somebody, that person is with majority. Thank you very much. And we do not need to fear. Lord, thank you very much. 
all things belong to us because all things belong to God and all things belong to the Son of God and we are joined heirs with the Son of God if we do his will I believe that the people have repented I believe that the people have turned I believe that the people have said we have a father and then we must follow our father I believe that the women are saying we have a father and we are following our father and we're going to look to the hole from where we were hewing. Lord, that, that's what I believe. That nobody is going by his own will. And doing what they liked in the church of the watchman. Because the church of the watchman is a special institution. That has been given a special pro, pro, project. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you very much. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are prayer. Yeah. And amen. And amen. Listen to me. This tradition of clapping after prayer is not necessary. The prayer you think of what you have prayed about. Think about it. Bow your head a little and meditate on the something. And continue saying in your heart, so be it, Lord.